You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of Elite Agent Magazine for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers and leaders. Each episode, we bring you behind-the-scenes coaching, news analysis, exclusive interviews, technology and more to help you list more, sell more and elevate your results. To subscribe to the magazine, visit eliteagent.com.au forward slash subscribe. Here is your host, Samantha McLean. Hey, hey, Samantha McLean from Elite Agent Magazine. This time, our Transform Masters behind the scenes podcast is going to deal with the tricky topic of outsourcing, one which many people in the industry debate hotly, regularly. Amy Engelman is the CEO of Beepo, a specialist real estate outsourcing firm located in the Philippines. In this session with our Transformer, she talks about some of the things that you can outsource safely, plus what sort of return on investment it can give you. But on the other side, she also talks about the factors that make outsourcing a success versus what are some of the things to look out for. In this session, she answers most of the burning questions about outsourcing. So if it's been on your mind, we hope you enjoy this session with Amy. Transform Masters 2017 is brought to you by Elite Agent with thanks to Property Tree, realestate.com.au and RealPlus. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me along today to help with Transform. Very, very excited. My name's Amy Engelman. I'm the CEO of Beepo. And today I'm talking all about outsourcing. And um, I've kind of subtitled this The Secrets of Sustainable and Profitable Agencies Revealed because I'm going to talk about a little bit about outsourcing, but I also want to share some case studies and share, you what, um, share basically what some of the industry are doing, what some of the innovators are doing, but what the sort of effects on your business, um, outsourcing and doing it right can have as well. A little bit about me, Bipo is an Australian-owned outsourcing firm. Our staff are predominantly in the Philippines, so they're English-speaking, university-qualified staff. Also a little bit about our business and our growth. We've been on a high-growth journey ourselves. We've learnt a lot about what underpins high-growth, profitable and sustainable businesses. So you'll be hearing a little bit about what's uh, happening in the real estate industry, but at the same time also learning from some of the things that we do in our business to help create a really scalable and profitable business. So you can have all of the amazing strategies in the world to go and grow your business, but if your administration is not under control, you are going to have some problems in executing. So you could go and acquire a whole heap of new listings and a whole heap of new properties to manage, but if your administration foundation is not solid, you will have difficulty delivering for the customer. So the three key areas for administration for that foundation and that trunk of the tree is around your people, your processes and your performance. And I know um, this is a nice tie into the session that you've just had because you've probably come out of that session and gone, oh my God, there's so much to implement. I'd love to do all of these things, but how do I resource for it? How do I get the time and how do I get the money to be able to do that? Thinking about the administration as the foundation of your business, some key risks and key opportunities. So without that administration focus, simple tasks can just quite clearly be missed. And this can have a huge impact on service and customer satisfaction levels. But once you get the administration taken care of and you get some processes around it and some people to help support you, it will free up your key staff or you to truly grow the business. It's about how do you get that administration right and how do you get that under control so that you can actually go out and do the relationship building and grow the business. With a well-defined process taking care of your administration and sales support tasks, you can have the capacity to grow. And when you do this well, a really interesting and kind of lesser known advantage is that your existing staff will actually be more satisfied in their role. So if you can take the things away from them that they don't like, the repetitive tasks, the administration tasks, and give them some support, they're actually going to be happier in their job. They're going to stick around longer and you're going to have a much more solid team. Now, if your team is a team of one, then personally, the what's in it for you is that you're not going to be stuck in those low value tasks. You're going to be out building the business. Now, outsourcing can come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but today I'm going to talk about outsourcing offshore and in particular the Philippines. And there's a couple of myths that I just want to straight out bust so you guys can get across this information. Some of the myths is that staff have got poor English skills. And in the Philippines, staff actually all speak English, they're university qualified, they go through their whole schooling system speaking English and they speak English at home. 
The second myth is that the quality is not there. And I just wanted to share with you that, you know, there are, with any sort of outsourcing opportunity, you do have to measure and monitor. But if you do that right, you can absolutely ensure that your high quality standards are never compromised. Data and security is one that comes up all the time. You know, will my data be safe? Um, And if you're working with the right provider, you won't have to worry about that. The fourth one is my current staff might feel threatened. So this is one I hear all the time. You know, I'm worried that my staff will think that I'm trying to get rid of them or that they're going to lose their job. And what the reality is, is that if you get an outsourcing model right, they're actually going to be really loving the fact that they're not doing those repetitive admin tasks and their satisfaction will increase. And the fifth and last one, uh, which is often a fear in holding, you know, people back from thinking about outsourcing is that their clients won't like it. You know, I don't want my clients speaking to someone from overseas. You know, you might be in an area where you think that that might have an impact on your brand. And, you know, you can absolutely choose how and when you use resources and if you want to have client contact or, or not. So I want to now talk about some examples and case studies. So what are the sorts of things that can be completed with outsourced staff offshore? So in the property management space, things like tenancy applications, scheduling routine inspections, maintenance requests and arrears. I hear it all the time, you know, oh, my staff hate chasing up arrears and, you know, it's always the last thing on the list. And so to have someone that actually does that daily and helps execute that, it could be via email, SMS, over the phone or letter as well. In the marketing space, managing online listings, e-newsletters, doing CRM updates, reporting on important metrics. So this could be either internal metrics or it could be metrics for your customers. Video editing, social media posting, um, putting up social media campaigns and also monitoring of those campaigns. I don't know whether you're finding this in your particular local area, but the way that customers are changing their behaviour when it comes to information search is that they're on social media, it's often after hours and they're interacting on those platforms. So if you can find a way that you can get to those people quicker and respond to them, then you're going to be ahead of the game. In sales support, things like uncovering new leads, customer intelligence, prospecting calls, market research and retention calls. And I've got a really interesting case study to share with you from a Canberra agent on a a sales campaign. And in the accounting space, things like bookkeeping, generating and sending invoices, um, debtors and creditors, payroll, super, IAS, doing, uh, doing the payroll stuff and basic trust accounting support as well. So the first case study I've got for you is a campaign that was done for a Canberra client and um, they call this Orphan Calls and basically it's lists for sales agents who are no longer with that particular office. They've got a database sitting there. It's really unknown, the relationship between those those clients and the brand. And they engaged us to have a sales assistant contact these clients and ask if they were interested for a property appraisal. So this was... It wasn't a warm call in the sense that they didn't really know how strong the relationship was. They probably knew of the brand and they probably remembered maybe the name of the sales agent, but it was a pretty cold call, to be honest. They're dialing from the Philippines, but using a local Canberra number. So we organise a local phone number for them and a really high quality phone line. So you don't get those gaps or those, you know, kind of delays like you often get with overseas calling. Um, The outcome, so I've just pulled out a four-week time period to share with you. There were 361 um, clients on the orphan list. They had six clients booked for physical appraisals. They had 73 clients booked in for the quarterly update and a property appraisal and 25 clients just for opted in for the quarterly update. And of one of those um, physical appraisals that were requested, there was one listing that was closed straight off that appointment. So really, really good result. They did this as a proof of concept. So they came in and said, look, we want to give this a go. We want to see how it's working for us, which we did on a kind of no commitment basis. And now that's now turned into a permanent position in their office. So they're doing orphan calls and a range of other lead generation activities now. Um, so the client commented that their BPO staff member was, you know, was obviously really good. The listing was was fantastic. And then they threw in a bit of a um, cash bonus, so $50 for her successful listing, which she, she was over the moon. That's quite a lot of money in the Philippines. Um, and, yeah, the investment for that client was just over 2200 a month, including their time, the team leader's time, all the required technology, calling, all that sort of stuff. 
So another case study, this is for an LJ Hawker office in Tasmania. Um, they've had a property management assistant who's been working on lease renewal, management, tenancy application, water invoicing, onboarding and also exit management. And they've had accommodation come in from the client. Amy asked me to pass on. She's really impressed with Harvin's ability of ability to follow her instructions guidance on tasks with high accuracy and attention to detail, high efficiency level and is very welcomed on our end. Once staff are actually working with your team, they really start to understand the value and they understand how it's actually impacting them and their work environment in a positive way. Um, so now the senior PM is more efficient and focusing on that relationship and growth side of the department and their investment was just over 2k per month which is including the property manager assistant, the team leader and all the required technology. The third case study I've got is from an office in Manuka in ACT, also in Canberra. So this property management assistant Liv again was just working on a, a trial basis and a lot of clients do this because they want to dip their toe in the water and just make sure you know that it's right and make sure that they uh, trust what we're telling them about how amazing the staff are. And so she started doing things like e-filing, helping with tenant onboarding and new managements. And then in the second month of the trial is working on a, a second office, which is part of their brand and helping out on some tenancy application and reference checking. So pretty quickly they uh, worked out that Liv was a good fit for them, was helping out with all of those administration tasks. They're actually going to a paperless office. So there was a huge amount of backlog of work that Liv, Liv was working on to get them into that paperless environment. She's now on a full-time contract and their investment is around 2100 per month, including herself, a team leader, all the technology and everything she needs to be efficient and effective. Well, let's roll on. One of the things, you know, when I come back to those three fundamentals of administration, we talked about people, we talked about process and we talked about performance. And um, I wanted to let you know that one of the things that good providers will do is they'll actually help you with the process piece. So there is no real estate office that I've ever spoken to when I ask them about their processes that have end-to-end -end processes for their administration. It just... You know, no one does, no business does. But how a good provider can help you is they will actually have some workflows that they have drafted or they can give you to act as a foundation or a starting point to clearly articulate what your Filipino assistant will be doing and what your local staff will be doing. So this is just a couple examples of existing workflows that we have that we make available to clients for things like property listing, um, repairs and maintenance. So this one is a little bit more complex because there's a lot of if what scenarios. So if this happens, then you have to do this. If this happens, you have to do this. You know, for repairs, you have to ask all of these questions. So these are the sorts of things that when it comes to being efficient and having that you know, trunk of your tree, that administration really, really well thought out, this is where you can lean on a provider to actually help you get to this point. And if you're a department that doesn't have any processes, then you get to leverage all of this. So you get to take these processes and have a look at them and see if they're going to work for your business as well. So it's not just about finding the right people, it's about making sure that they understand clearly what part of the process they're responsible for and what part they need to go back to the sales agent, the sales manager, the property manager for guidance on. So I wanted to cover off models. Now, there's different ways that, as I said, and lots of different models for accessing staff offshore. You know, you can go from the fivers where you can pay five bucks US and get someone to help you with a little task. You can go to places like Upwork where people from all over the world will be working from home in a freelancer environment. In the real estate industry, I really recommend a work from office environment. I don't think a work from home environment is secure enough when it comes to managing databases and managing your clients your clients data so my first recommendation is always look for a work from office solution at BPO, we offer three different models. So we offer a full-time model, a part-time model, where you can have someone for 20 hours per week if you don't have enough full-time work yet. And we also have a product called PM Assist, which helps you with PM administration at a fixed cost per property per month. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this today because if anyone is interested, then I'm happy to have an offline chat. That's not, that's not the objective today. But what I did want to share with you is that there are different ways to engage and you may not be ready or, or thinking about you know, having enough work, 40 hours of work, 
you know, I'm not really sure, I don't really know whether I've got that much work yet, you can actually dip your toe in the water and find some tasks and give it a go without having to commit to full-time resourcing. So lots of different flexible options. All right, I want to talk finances. And this is really, really closely linked to a lot of the coaching I'm sure that you're getting is giving you more and more to do. You know, you've got more implementation to do. You've got more time that you want to spend on understanding your numbers. You've got more time that you want to, you want to spend on new business development activities. You want to become more efficient and effective and you want to work on leadership and coaching and just so many different things, I'm sure. And the reason why I want to show you these numbers is this is about leverage. This is about how you truly leverage every single dollar in your business or department and do everything you can to put that money to work for you so that you can then in turn grow your business more, grow your department more, gain more revenue and invest, whether it be in staff, in training, in development, in lots of different options. So with these numbers, I want to share this concept with you of the total cost of an employee. You can go to your accountant and ask this question of them and they'll very clearly give you their view as well. But talking about the total cost of an employee, so in addition to someone's salary, the cost that a business or department has on top of that is research says it's between 1.5 and 2.7 times the salary. So this is covering things like payroll tax, leave, benefits, supervision, desk space, rent, internet, IT, you know, cost of getting their computer set up, cost of getting their employment contract ready. So overall for this example, I, I've taken the middle ground. I didn't take 1.5, I didn't take 2.7. And because it's easy from a maths point of view, I just took two times the salary. So somewhere in the middle. And I'm going to share this example with you around having an employee locally versus having an employee offshore and what that can mean for your business and how you can leverage that investment. The first one is having a local property management or, or sales support administrator. And I've just based this on 65000 salary. In some areas, it might be a little bit more or a little bit less. But in speaking to uh, to the industry, that's that's kind of my starting point around sixty five grand for an administrator. Now, using our total employment research that we spoke about, the on costs, including things like taxation, super, office, phone, supervision, leave benefits, IT, employee benefits, HR, industrial relations, compliance costs, the total cost of that employee per year is double their salary, so 130000 When you're looking at an outsourced option, apples for apples, so a full-time staff member who is supervised, you know, with all the equipment they need, office facilities, you know, phone, Australian phone number, employee benefits, all inclusive, build monthly, as well as things like, you know, help with processes. As a value add, you're coming in at 27,504. So your annual savings is over 102,000. Now, I'm not saying that it's a good idea to go and make your sales administrator or your PM administrator redundant. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is as your business grows and as your administration grows and as you want to become more efficient and become a well-oiled machine, you can think about alternating and having both Australian staff and outsourced staff to make your business more efficient. And you can do it at a much, much cheaper cost than what you would in having a full-time employee in Australia. And what that allows you to do is reinvest that money back into your business. So you could then spend $102,000 a year on other business development activities, or you could spend it on coaching and training for your existing staff, or you could put the money in the bank and, you know, make it work for you in another place or build another business or save it. There's so many different options of what you could do with that. It's about using that money in the most efficient manner and getting the largest return on investment for that spend. And the research very, very clearly says that the most certain predictor of repeat purchase purchase or referral is customer satisfaction. So repeat purchase or referral. So think about how much business you get that is repeat and how much business you get that is referral. It's just huge. So if you knew the number one predictor of a referral, would you not want to know what that number is? And it's really, really simple to ask and there are some tools that can help you do that. So my view on this is, yes, you can measure profits. Yes, you can measure cash. Yes, you can measure properties under, you know, under management. Yes, you can measure commission. And they're all fantastic, but they're all historic numbers. They've already been done. 
by the time you get your P&L or by the time you pull the data, that's historic. We're talking about lead indicators. And if this is the most important factor in gaining a referral, wouldn't you want to measure it? And wouldn't you want to measure it as much as you can without, without annoying the customer? So it's my view and my recommendation. If there's only one thing that you take from this presentation today, if you are not measuring your customer satisfaction, then have a look at some of the tools that I suggest and, and do this because it's simple to execute. Now, this has a really nice tie into the outsourcing piece because if you're measuring customer satisfaction, you will truly know whether you are being more efficient and you're actually servicing your customers in a positive way. Because I know plenty of people go, oh, I don't want to have staff offshore. I think it's going to be bad for our service. And, you know, we've got such a personal approach and I'm so good at what I do. I don't want to hand it over to someone else. If you're measuring your customer service, you will know. You'll know straight away whether there's an impact and you'll know where it's having an impact and you'll also be able to fix it. One way to measure customer satisfaction is something called Net Promoter Score and it quite simply asks the question, how likely are you to recommend me or my business to a colleague or friend? You might have had yourself surveyed if you've had an interaction with you know, banks or telcos or things like that. They often ask this question at the end of a service interaction. Now, there is one very successful property management business that I know from Queensland that had over 4,000 properties under management. They had their whole customer touch point back end in the Philippines, tenants and also landlords. Now, they measured NPS, and not only did they measure NPS, they measured it throughout the relationship. So they measured from a tenant point of view when they came on board. They measured them four weeks after. They measured them six months in. They measured them after their inspection. They measured them at exit or after exit. And at every touch point, they were looking for, are they satisfied or not? So not only did they just measure it you know, once a quarter throughout their customer base, they were measuring it by the type of interaction that they were having. Now... They didn't do that because they were in the Philippines. They did it because it's good for business. But at the same time, they were very, very clearly able to catch any aspects of their service delivery that needed improvement. So we do this in our business. We measure net promoter score. It's a score. It's not a percentage. It's basically the number of detractors taken away from the number of promoters and people who answer seven and eight are passives. We use a tool called Ask Nicely. And in the industry, often, you know, some people are using a tool called Real Satisfied. Doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you do. Both of those are less than, I think, 30 or $40 a month and you can upload a list. Ask Nicely is very cool because you can actually even get testimonials as well and use them straight on your website at a one click. So you can ask the customer if you can publish their um, testimonial when they give it. It's fantastic. So as I said, if there's one thing that I found from the feedback when I read the homework is that there's a huge opportunity for you guys to measure customer satisfaction, knowing that it's the single most certain predictor of a referral. So next steps, I'd like to suggest if you've got an interest in understanding how you can use offshore staff to be more efficient, be more sustainable, build a better business and have more leverage really to, to go and grow and prosper, I would sit down with a couple of key people in your team and I know it's going to be a bit scary, but you open up the conversation, maybe share some stories from other agencies that you know that are, that are doing this and doing well, and just to ask them what tasks don't they like. So start talking to the people who are doing administration and ask them what they don't like. They'll tell you. What are the tasks that they put off? So what are those things that go to the bottom of the list and why? And they'll probably tell you that they're putting them off because they don't like them or they don't feel like they, they're supported in doing it or it's just a pain in the butt, or it's too hard because they have to go and scan this and then put the data there and then take it there, and it's just clunky. And then finally, what are the repeatable processes in your department? So look for the rinse and repeat processes. You know, I can give you some ideas on what they are based on what many of our clients do, but it's also good for you to ask that question of your staff because they will come up with some ideas. So that's it for this week and if you'd like to ask any questions of Amy, she will be presenting at our event in Sydney called How to Lead a Winning Team in 2018 where we will be announcing the winner of Transform Masters. Catch you again soon for some more insights from the series. To keep up with all the latest information, visit eliteagent.com.au forward slash transform. I'm Samantha McLean. See you soon. Transform Masters 2017 is brought to you by Elite Agent with thanks to Property Tree, realestate.com.au and Real Plus. 
To subscribe to the magazine, visit eliteagent.com.au forward slash subscribe.